Through most of human history, it was widely believed that the pinnacle of knowledge had already been reached. Whether despotic rulers, royal bloodlines or religious deities, it was the authority of the day which had the final word, with their understanding of the universe unassailable. There was no need to welcome any new ideas, for our ancestors were told that everything there was to know had already been thought. Only someone with boundless courage and intellect could attempt to challenge this prevailing orthodoxy. A mathematician, a physicist, an astronomer, but most importantly, a resolute truth seeker. Galileo Galilei was that man, probably doing more than any other to open the floodgates of scientific learning and further our understanding of the universe. his inquisitive mind outpacing his body. As soon as Galileo learned of a strange device invented in the Netherlands that could magnify distant objects, he immediately visualised how he would set about constructing his own. This, of course, was the telescope, and Galileo was the first to turn his towards our darkened starry skies. Gazing up at the heavens, he observed a small constellation of what seemed to be stars surrounding Jupiter. Eagerly looking on at night, he observed that they wandered in a regular pattern like satellites around the gas planet. Jupiter, he found, had moons which orbited it. Then he turns his attention to Venus and notes that it undergoes phases just like our moon, thereby implying that it orbits the sun. Galileo's findings were groundbreaking. Shattering conventional wisdom, he established that it was the sun, not the earth, which lay at the centre of our solar system. Published in the hardening, hostile 17th century religious climate of Europe, Galileo was immediately a target. With enemies mounting around him, Galileo sees the writing on the wall and writes to the Grand Duchess Christina of Tuscany in 1615 to offer a robust defence of intellectual freedom and the scientific method. Some years ago, as your Serene Highness well knows, I discovered in the heavens many things that had not been seen before our own age. The novelty of these things stirred up against me no small number of professors, showing a greater fondness for their own opinions than for truth. They sought to deny and disprove the new things which, if they had cared to look for themselves, their own senses would have demonstrated to them. Persisting in their original resolve to destroy me and everything mine by any means they can think of. These men have resolved to fabricate a shield for their fallacies out of the mantle of pretended religion and the authority of the Bible. They would have us altogether abandon reason and the evidence of our senses in favour of some biblical passage. I think that in discussions of physical problems, we ought to begin not from the authority of scriptural passages, but from sense experiences and necessary demonstrations. A religious man himself, Galileo expounds that science and reason are not incompatible with religion. I do not mean to infer that we need not have an extraordinary esteem for the passages of Holy Scripture. On the contrary, having arrived at any certainties in physics, 
we ought to utilize these as the most appropriate aids in the true exposition of the Bible. I do not feel obliged to believe that the same God who has endowed us with senses, reason and intellect has intended us to forego their use and the knowledge which we can attain by them. He would not require us to deny sense and reason in physical matters which are set before our eyes and minds by direct experience or necessary demonstrations. But Galileo's plea for understanding comes to little avail. A year after this letter is sent, he is summoned to the Roman Catholic Inquisition and censored, concluding that his ideas amount to heresy Galileo is ordered never to promulgate them any further and stripped of all his teaching posts. But defiant to the end, years later, Galileo published another work which defied this order. This time, however, there is no return. Forced to recant his claims, he is sentenced to live out the remainder of his life on the house arrest. Referencing the orbit of the earth around the sun, it is said that when Galileo left his final inquisition, he muttered the words, and yet it moves under his breath. 359 years after his death, in 1992, the Roman Catholic Church issued an apology and admitted that Galileo was right. Perhaps, his utterance of these words signalled that he knew this day would come and it would finally be revealed that he was on the right side of history. Galileo Galilei with a letter for the ages.